All right, I think I'm uh, I think I'm live. And if I'm not, I'll figure it out here in just a couple of seconds. But anyway, I'm going to pretend I am. And here we go. First time out uh, today. I had to take a little bit of time off earlier in the day today because it was just driving me insane. Um, I had to go to the doctor and some other stuff. But anyway, I hope everybody's okay uh, at this point. Still looking pretty much at a major hurricane. I don't see anything that's really going to influence it that much or change anything that much um, coming up here because we're just going to end up having uh, more of the same. It's already strengthened again. It's uh, become a Category 5 hurricane. You see that there uh, in the monitor. And uh, they just recorded 905 millibars again. I don't know if you remember yesterday. It went down below the 900 mark, which uh, doesn't happen very often, five, six times in our lifetimes or in history that we know of. Uh, if you saw the, uh, the show Hamilton, you know that might have been a Category 5 uh, there. I've studied that a little bit. But anyway, let's talk about what's going on right now. And uh, if you take a look at what's happening, uh, basically is a 905 millibar storm. You can see it uh, right here. I just made a, a couple of videos to show you what this looked like. And as it uh, moves along, it still has a maximum wind speed of 65 miles per hour, east-northeast at 9, and a barometric pressure at 905, which uh, may actually bring the, uh, the wind up a little bit. But here's what it looks like uh, right now. Currently, when you take a look at it, oh, my, my back's hurting. I'm sorry. Um, when you take a look at it, you can see the path is still to the north and to the east, and it is still looking like it's going to be 155 miles an hour, about 100 miles from the coast. And that's already looking to drive an incredible surge on shore from Tampa or somewhere just to the south, which would get down into Port Charlotte, the rest of the area there. And I'm sure uh, people are very concerned about that as they go through the next 24 hours in any of those areas there on the western coastline, up and down the line, basically. Uh, here's what the storm looks like. My gosh, it can't look any more like a huge storm than it does right now. The eye is near perfection when it comes to the way a hurricane looks. It has everything still going for it at this point. It won't find anything against it until during the day tomorrow. About 450 miles away from uh, Tampa, St. Pete, from that area, with a continuation off to the north, and uh, looks like north and eastward as it goes, and uh, still pretty much looking like the storm as it goes on to the north, won't encounter anything until about right there. And uh, that's where the boundary is that it might be moving up against as we go through time. So, uh, as you look at it right there, again, like I said, near perfection when it comes to the eye of a hurricane. They're penetrating that now with two planes that are out and about looking into it. It's about 10 miles uh, wide from one side to the other. We can take measurements with it now uh, from the satellite information. And there it goes as it's moving off. You can see it's moving a little to the, to the north and east. Not eastward now, but to the northeast. And that's the change that's really taken place over the last 12 hours or so, really. But when you look at it, compare it to the coastline there, uh, once again, still looking at some of the information here. And I'll go to the radar. We'll take a look at radar down there, not uh, out of Birmingham. But the radar, TBW, the radar there will be watching that as time goes on. Already a lot of rainfall and the banding's coming in. So we've got some marine warnings there down to the south. Uh, those will be uh, uh, very prompt, too. So the official forecast now has a major hurricane making a landfall. That would be during the early morning hours on Thursday. Now, it looks like all the modeling I can see, the consensus modeling that's put together, all the forecast models that come together, spaghetti plots is what you're thinking about, show this a little bit south of Tampa Bay. Now, it doesn't really matter. The effects would be a little bit different, and this would actually be good for Tampa Bay. But uh, probably at this point, we're still looking at the fact that the hurricane, as it moves uh, further to the north and to the east, will eventually i keep getting messages here uh, uh okay thank you jamie uh will eventually go northeastward and try to follow the track here you're looking at the satellite image comparing it to what the modeling says and at this point uh does look like the actual hurricane uh, makes landfall there somewhere but again if you look at the storm surge and what we're thinking about 10 to 15 is still very possible from Tampa Bay all the way down to Charlotte Harbor and Bonita Beach. 
uh, where an 8 to 12 could show up. I mean, the further south you go down into the Florida Peninsula, maybe the worst it could be as uh, we move along and, we, you know, we go through the next 24 hours. It's really going to be uh, essential that evacuations take place, but I've talked to quite a few people who aren't leaving Tampa, who aren't leaving Tampa Bay, who are probably five or six feet above sea level. And uh, this is where the flood risk is the greatest there from Orlando back over to Tampa Bay and through that general area. This is just a little update. Um, we'll be alive tomorrow, I'm sure. Got Brett Adair, and uh, he's got a bunch of surge cams that he's putting out that we'll be looking at during the day tomorrow. And we'll be in a, a continuous thing. But right now, just trying to take a break and relax. I'm going to go to dinner in a few moments. Everything is nice here in Panama City. Uh, had a little land breeze during the day today that came up, but nothing uh, really bad. 165 mile per hour winds. The new barometric pressure is 900. And.